What makes something right or wrong? What ought I to do? How do I decide what I ought to do? What is right and wrong? What makes something right or wrong? How does one lead a good life? There is not a right answer. It's an ill-defined problem that has several possibilities. And what you have to learn how to do is go through all those possibilities and based on information, based on your values, determine what your answer to that question is. Suppose there were two children drowning. You could save only one of them. One was your child, the other was a stranger's child. Would you have an obligation to flip a coin? Or would there be something morally obtuse if you didn't rush to save your child? So, in philosophy, generally, there is not a distinction made between ethics and morality. Philosophers generally, not always, but generally, use these two terms interchangeably. Both of them mean what's good or bad, or talking about right and wrong. This is needed because when defining ethics, many will use the word morals interchangeably. Ethics is the branch of philosophy which asks questions about values and behaviour. How should we live our lives? Ethics is about values, principles, human action and interaction. First of all, values. Values are qualities that signify what is important and worthwhile. Your values serve as a basis for moral codes and ethical reflection. Each of you has your own values based on your family, religion, peers, and so on. There is, however, some disagreement among scholars as to the difference between morals and ethics. One school of thought asserts that morality is inherently founded on spiritual principles, one's responsibility to a supernatural being or goal. Everyone has their own definition of what is morally right and wrong. As humans, we try to find universal establishments in order to be connected and have similar understandings to each other. However, morals are harder to pinpoint. We have general ideas of what we agree to be true, such as killing is bad. What are the roles of ethics in our lives, and how are they being established? As humans, we have the unique ability to reason, and it has become a key part in the establishment of our ethics and morals. And also to keep in mind that a good ethical theory should promote human flourishing, reduce suffering, and prevent the collapse of society. Ethics, on the other hand, relies on materialist and social consequences, not spiritual ones, in order to determine what is ethical or not. He refused on the ground that he couldn't bring himself. It would be a special moral crime for him to bomb his people, even in a cause that he supported, the cause of liberating France. Now, do we admire that? If we do, the communitarian argues, it's because we do recognize obligations of solidarity. Morality, on the other hand, is one's own personal sense of right and wrong. It's not imposed by anyone. It's just what you think is good and bad personally. And these two can conflict. And while this etymology is interesting, I suggest that you define morality as what you believe is right and wrong, and ethics as why you believe it to be right and wrong. Ethics, as a field of study, is sort of like a tree with 10,000 branches. Branches that all disagree with each other. With such variances, then how do we begin to understand ethics? Ethics is often defined as the study of morality, but a more detailed and revealing definition is provided by John Day in his book Introduction to Ethics. Ethics is a study of what are good and bad ends to pursue in life, and what it is right and wrong to do in the conduct of life. It is therefore above all a practical discipline. Its primary aim is to determine how one ought to live and what actions one ought to do in the conduct of one's life. On the other hand, reasoning could be viewed as having a very small role in ethics. Ethics are created through intuition and therefore don't need to be thought out in order to form ethical judgments. What is the moral significance of national boundaries? Why is it, or is it the case, so the tragedy of the commons goes like this. You have a number of herders who share a common pasture. And every now and then, these herders have to ask themselves, do I want to add another animal to my flock? And these are rational herders. 
And they think to themselves, well, if I add another animal, that's more that I get to sell at market. That's very good for me. What's, that's the upside. What's the downside? Well, they eat more grass, but we all share this commons. I don't really pay very much to support the animal myself, just the, my fraction of the commons. So I'm going to add some more animals to my herd. And everybody thinks, thinks the same thing, and they add more and more animals. But if you add too many animals to a pasture, eventually the pasture gets eroded, and everybody's worse, worse off. This is the fundamental problem of cooperation. That is, there's a tension between individual interest and collective interest. What's good for me versus what's good for us. And this is really the fundamental social problem. But first, let's consider a few examples. Kant begins with an example of a shopkeeper. He wants to bring out the intuition and make plausible the idea. Some say that if we live in a godless universe, there's no basis for morality. That is, principles concerned with the distinction between right and wrong or good and bad behavior or character. However, for many others, religion is the problem. So we're going to go through the process of how to answer an ethical question. And when I say answer, I don't mean there's a right answer. That's what makes it an ethical question or a critical thinking question. Ethics is a branch of philosophy concerned with how people should act in a general sense or in a specific circumstance. In the case of justice and rights, if we suspect that Mill is implicitly leaning on notions of human dignity or respect for a person that are not, strictly speaking, utilitarian, <coughs> we need to look to see whether there are some stronger theories of rights that can explain the intuition, which even Mill shares, the intuition that the reason for respecting individuals and not using them goes beyond even utility in the long run. Instead, they believe ethics is simply a formal branch of philosophy that concerns itself with the study of morals and their derivation. This group would assert that ethics is a philosophy of morals. Consider, for example, how arbitrary moral stances tend to be, especially when they're outside of one's own culture or religious beliefs. I said, wait a minute. I haven't hired you. We haven't made any agreement. And then he became very angry. And he said, do you mean to say that if I had fixed your car while I was working under the steering column that you wouldn't have paid me? And I said, that's a different question. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't go into the distinction between consent-based and benefit-based <laughs> obligations. But I think he had the intuition that if he had fixed it while he was poking around, that I would have owed him the 50 bucks. I shared that intuition. I would have. Morals are codes of contact, conduct that govern your behavior. They are an expression of your values, so based on your values. Ethics is where terms such as right and wrong or good and evil get their meaning. Ethics is not a matter of factual knowledge in the way that sciences or other branches of inquiry are. Rather, it has to do with determining the nature of normative theories and applying these sets of principles to practical moral problems. Ethics is a general term for what is often described as the science of morality. In philosophy, ethical behavior is that which is good. The Western tradition of ethics is sometimes called moral philosophy. The next level down is ethics. When we talk about ethics, I want you to think about it as a process. It's not, are you ethical or not? It's not, I didn't cheat on a test, so I am ethical. Ethics, as we're going to define it in the process of thinking, is a way to work through a dilemma. So it's a process and we're going to go through that process. What is the method of reflective equilibrium? It's moving back and forth between our considered judgments about particular cases and the general principles we would articulate to make sense of those judgments. And not just stopping there because we might be wrong in our initial intuitions. Not stopping there but then sometimes revising our particular judgments in the light of the principles once we work them out. So sometimes we revise the principles, sometimes we revise our judgments and intuitions in the particular cases. 